Call the meeting to order. Ms. T, would you call the roll, please? Deborah Johnston. Here. Those are loud tonight. J.R. Huddleston. Here. David Burris. Bill Lukens. Here. Larry Pratt. Here. Craig Romy. Present. Linda Varvel. Here. Melanie Wilson. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Quick update for council. Uh, a while back I mentioned that uh, Dave is uh, dealing with a, a personal uh, situation. Uh, it's getting better, and he hopes that uh, he'll be with us uh, soon. So, again, if you want to reach out to him and ask him how he's doing and wish him well, uh, I'm confident he would appreciate that. Uh, as always, conflict of interest. If you have anything that uh, you're uncomfortable voting on, please let the council know. Um, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion we approve the agenda. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, motion to approve the minutes from the August 1st meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the August 1st council meeting. Second. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, motion to approve the bills in between. I'll make a motion to approve the bills in between for $246,616.80. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. A motion to approve the current claims. I make a motion to approve the current claims of $76,568.77. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Brings us to a Drinking Water Excellence Award. And this is an award that um, our water department has gotten for quite a long time. So, uh, Tracy, looks like you're the only one. Tracy? No, that's Gav. I'll grab the microphone. <clears throat> That's... Oh, okay. There's a bird in here somewhere. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, this is from the Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources, State of South Dakota. For 19 consecutive years, the City of Hot Springs Public Water System has met the requirements of the Safe Drinking Water Act and the State of South Dakota's regulations. 19 consecutive years of supplying safe drinking water to the public is a remarkable achievement. It is our pleasure to present to you the Secretary's Award for Drinking Water Excellence that recognizes your system and the system's operations specialists that have demonstrated excellence in water system management and maintenance. And the, the award reads, Secretary's Award for Drinking Water Excellence 2021. By virtue of the authority vested in me and after due consideration, I do hereby certify that the City of Hot Springs, through extra concern and endeavor, has met all state requirements for safe drinking water and has supplied 19 consecutive years of safe, safe drinking water to the public it serves. The Secretary, Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources. So that's for the department. Congratulations. Thank you. Then we have some individual ones. Uh, they all read the same, so I'll read the first one. Uh, this one is for Sean Hiley. 
You are a system operations specialist of a public water system that has met the requirements of the Safe Drinking Water Act and the state of South Dakota's regulations for supplying safe drinking water to the public. For your efforts and concern for safe drinking water, we would like to present this achievement award to you. This program was initiated by the Drinking Water Program to renew, to reward those systems and their system operations specialists that have demonstrated excellence in water system management and maintenance. That one's for Sean, if you would be good enough to give that one to him. Uh, next one is for Mike Parmalee. Mike has recently retired, um, but he earned that award while he was still working for the City of Hot Springs. Sean? And then we have one for Tad Harder. One for Pete Miles. And then finally, one for Tracy, our city engineer. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the city and the council, if you would thank all of them, uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trish. Thank you. Communications from the public. Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Donna Kreshel, 2469 Fern Circle. I just wanted to know on the new road on Jennings, on the side of the post office, how is one supposed to park? Because the way the spaces are, I mean, when you back out, you back right into whatever car's coming. I mean, there's barely any space over there. So everybody's parking parallel to the uh, sidewalk. Nobody's parking in the spaces. Right. And on the uh, post office side of the street, mm -hmm. it is parallel parking. It is not diagonal parking over there. Okay, but that's not how the lines are set up. On the post office side? Yeah. It there's, they're sideways, the way they're on the other side. Diagonal on a post and people side. are parking this way. And the other side is, is parallel. No. No, mm -mm. no the, the, the business side is diagonal. And the, the uh, markings that I've seen on the post office side are parallel. Uh, Rachel, you park over there. Is it, how, it's not parallel because you parked your car. You park, you, everybody parks their car parallel, but the lines are not parallel. I mean, the lines are diagonal. I, I'll, I'll take a look again, but the last well, time, <laughs> last time I, I mean, walked, the, the I mean, that's the way the lines are. So it's kind of confusing because nobody's parking that way. Because if you park that way, I don't know how you're going to get out. I yeah. just walked there yesterday, and it's parallel parking near the post office side and diagonal on the opposite. Well, side. I must be blind then. Okay. <laughs> I'll go back and look at it tonight, but I, I, I have to tell you, I apologize because I looked at them the other day when I walked past, and I agree with her. I thought they were diagonal on the post office side because I thought to myself, they got the lines down. That's good. Yeah. I will double check. Though. I, could, I'm, I may be wrong as well. It's yeah. parallel. I'll, I'll look at them again in the morning, too. Yeah. Uh, oh, we'll double check that. Anyone else from the public? We'll go to our council updates. Andrea, are you here for Shedco? I might have to have help raising this. Is that good? Yes. Oh, thanks. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Um, Andrea from Shedco. I submitted a report to you a couple of weeks ago, and I'm just assuming that you read it, and I don't want to be redundant. So I will just um, speak to a few updates uh, on the ongoing projects. I talked a little bit about um, South Dakota Housing and that Shedco is working with developer Dream Design out of Rapid City. They should be sending me design plan plans for building 
building one this week, and they're currently doing a feasibility assessment. So we're moving along. Um, and uh, I also reported about talent recruitment for Fall River Health Services. We now have four recruits, and I think it'll start speeding up now that the housing issue is slowing down a tad. Um, I reported that uh, Western Dakota Technical College is pursuing the nursing program here in Hot Springs, and it's slated to start in 2024. They'll have room for 16 attendees, and right now the state veterans home has volunteered space for their lab, their classroom, and they will, of course, participate in the clinicals. The um, program director came down from Western Dakota Wednesday to look over the space to see if it would be adequate. And the, I wanted you to know that the reason the programming won't start until 2024 is that the Higher Learning Commission has to review the program for certification, and that takes about a year. So that's why it will be January of 2024. Is there going to be like dorm space for them? Those are not the plans right now because we're expecting everybody to come in from um, commutable areas. Okay. That's the purpose of having the program here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I also discussed uh, the potentials for EV charging stations. I have found. Um, a funding stream, a grant that could cover that, and it opened today, the grant window, and it closes September 15th. So that's something that I should probably discuss with Bob and Jeff ASAP. And then if it's appropriate, I guess I need a vote from City Council to go ahead with that because it would become city property. And uh, I have done some research it appears that charging stations that are in a municipality bring in revenue because there's a cost associated to use them. Those are the stations that I've looked at so far, but I'm open. Again, this is a new thing for me, so I'm open to any kind of input. And I'm thinking we might want an ad hoc committee for the purposes of the grant. So there's that. And I'll text you too. Can, yeah, can we meet separately? Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, I mentioned also in the annual report that I'm working on a Google map of all the retail um, venues in downtown. I was I discussed with Dennis Fisher the option of using a senior intern to do that project. It's very detail oriented and. You don't really count all the retail venues until you have to count them and put them in their appropriate locations with their appropriate little icons. So it is going to be time consuming and I think it will be a great project for a senior, assuming I can find one who knows how to do it all, hopefully better than I do. <laughs> Let's see, lastly. The conference that I'll be attending in September is the Fuel the Growth Economic Development Training that's hosted by Rushmore Region and Black Hill State University. <coughs> Council members are welcome to attend, and if anyone is interested, I would love for you to come, and I'm happy to send you the registration information. There is a cost associated with it. That's everything new that's happened since the report, and if, do you, does anybody have any questions about the report or anything else? I didn't catch what you said at the beginning about Shedco working with Dream Design for building a workforce house this no, week. No, building one. What? Building one up at the state vet's home. Oh, okay. Um, they're looking at converting it into apartments. Okay. And they'll be sending designs that I'm, I'm assuming one will include efficiencies and the, uh, the second one will not. It'll be one, two, and a couple of three bedrooms. They've projected to me between 26 and 28 apartments. So. Wow. That'd be great. Yep. Are they building that new? 
Were they putting in one of the older buildings? They'll put it in building one, which is, when you drive up to the campus, it's the brick building right. on the left that was built in 1950. And Schiff, Southern Hills Future Foundation, currently owns it, so they would transfer it to Dream Design. Okay. It used to be the men's dorm? Yes. Yeah. So I have a question about the uh, charging stations. Yes. Any thoughts about where they might be located? And, and I ask because um, when the suspended sidewalk uh, first became a possibility, there were folks that had hoped that the charging stations could be incorporated into the parking along the uh, suspended sidewalk. So um, Black Hills Energy was part of that conversation and they felt like uh, Centennial Park might be a better location for putting the infrastructure in for charging stations rather than trying to incorporate that with the suspended sidewalk. So just wondering if... I think, yeah, I'm willing to. I, I don't really have any formal opinions about that. I think we need some wayfinding signage for that. Um, in looking at the parameters of the grants, I have a couple of arguments that I... Many arguments, but two of them that rose to the top of my mind are that we're the last community before you hit prairie and then there's no more possibility of a charging station for 60 miles in either direction and that produces EV charging angst mm -hmm. for people who have electric vehicles so we're losing visitation because we don't have that capacity and secondarily with all the new funding that I'm sure you've heard about coming from the feds um, for EV everything um, I think I believe that vehicles that are EV are going to come down considerably in price and having some charging stations available in neighborhoods that are lower income I think would be beneficial even having someone here a couple here at the Mueller Center for people who live in the area, I think would be helpful. So having some focused on visitors and some focused on um, residents who probably don't have the ability to charge on their own property would be helpful, I think. So those are the two things I've come up with. And there is a diversity element in the grant and, and that would, I think, address it. Audrey, if you can send me the information you've got, and then I'll, I'll meet separately with, with the committees because um, that's on the list of things we want to look at. Anyway. Oh, good. I'm glad so to hear that. I, I want to share some ideas with, mm -hmm. with the committee before we go any further, and then and then we'll talk. Okay. Is that okay? So we need to be quick about yeah, all yeah, of no, it because I, mean, yeah. I only have a month. Gotcha. Okay. Now, you're talking about EV stations for vehicles. What, vehicles. Yes. What sure. happened to disability? No, we, we've oh, got that's those. a different thing entirely. We've already got those, Larry. Yeah. But that's, that, that. This is a different different grant and for for cars. Okay. A whole right. a whole don't, new project. I just don't want to see the the, the disabled. Oh no, again, that's not going to happen. Once yeah, again, get pushed aside started. by the community. Okay. No, yeah. I agree with you. All right. And that's I think we're far, far enough along that it's not possible for that to be forgotten. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think down the center of Centennial Park parking lot would be the most efficient, easy access. And I have noticed um, that uh, Custer has them off in their own lot, kind of across from Lynn's Dakota Mart. And one other thing that I have been looking into, there are fast chargers and then a slower charger. And my own personal opinion is that for the downtown area, we might want the slower charges because then people have will be encouraged to get out, go eat lunch, visit the stores, et cetera, because they'll have a block of time to do that in. We want really slow chargers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Two days. If they're going to put fast chargers three blocks away, they're going to go to the fast one if they want to anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I think everyone's going to want the fast charger. And that's, yeah, that's something to consider. I, I These are just thoughts that have popped into my head. I did listen to um, the explanation of the EV charging part of the large funding stream that's coming from the feds. And the Director of Transportation of Wyoming is asking for an exemption for rural towns so that they can use the slow chargers for that very reason. Hmm. Anything else? Thank you. That was more Thanks than I so know. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Tracy, you're next. Well, good evening once again. Um, this will be basically be a once a month update as we go through the big project. And um, the primary focus, of course, is actually the city's part of things, which is strictly the, the utilities. Um, we'll let the DOT worry about all the concrete and all of that. But uh, anyway, um, you know, uh, the work, of course, is continuing on the pavement placement down on the south end of town. Uh, they've got the center um, part. Uh, done today, and they were uh, doing the uh, expansion joints, and it actually looks pretty good. It, I think it was a visual illusion all the time. I think a lot of us were driving along there. We thought that one side was a lot higher than the other, and it's not. <laughs> it's not. I was assured by, the, by um, Rich Zocker that it wasn't, and he was right. Uh, Jennings Avenue is open other than the light fixtures. Um, we're anxiously awaiting seeing a couple of the brand new light fixtures show up. And it's my understanding that they'll just be on the south side of the street in that block. And they'll be LED, so we'll be starting to get some modernization of our lights. Um, the main objective, of course, of my report is city utilities update and uh, what is going on. Um, the biggest thing that's probably new in the last month is the discovery that um, a lot of our valves on the section of the water main from University on South, which is a PVC water main that um, is not being replaced because it's PVC, uh, we did find that the valves, the actual bodies of the valves, the outside structure, um, has been very badly corroded by the uh, very corrosive soils. Um, and we actually had one that we've replaced uh, in the intersection at Galveston that the body of the valve was actually starting to leak water. I mean, through the outside of the valve. So we could have had another big water main, you know, type of failure in that area rather soon. So uh, it's very prudent, uh, given what we've discovered with these uh, conditions of the valves, that we do replace the valves. Uh, the pipe is good, um, and that area is, from what we can tell, was bedded well, uh, simply because of the fact it was farther from where there was conglomerate and a lot of rocks. So when they put that water main in in 1980, they had fairly good soil to put it in. Um, so the valve replacement project is going to be accomplished by city crews. Uh, it doesn't take that long to do. Uh, we've already done uh, one intersection. Well, actually, we've, uh, we've done some work on the 5th Street intersection as well. Um, the total cost for the valves is, at current prices, and I do stress that, is about $70,000. Um, I uh, did an invoice for a valve uh, in uh, late June that um, I, we bought the exact same valve last week and the price had changed by about 11 to 12 percent in just uh, five weeks time. So hopefully that trend will stop or slow down or reverse, but uh, it does seem prudent that the sooner we're able to, you know, get the valves ordered and get these things procured, uh, probably the better off we're going to be price-wise. Uh, that is the probably the most significant news right now. The other uh, item that we are anticipating, and I have uh, also mentioned in the report a couple weeks ago, is we are expecting a price from the uh, utility contractor, which is DRM, for the additional 1,900 feet of water main replacement from Minnacotta Avenue up to Battle Mountain. And of course, that is actually a PVC line, which is only 42 years old. But we found when we had that big break last winter up by the courthouse, that area, and we've fixed, we've dug it up and looked at some a couple other spots, um, they just, when they put it in, they put big rocks all around it. and. About half of our water main breaks in the last 10 years have been on the PVC, on the new type of pipe, or relatively new, uh, installed in the 70s and 80s when they just thought that that type of pipe was impervious to anything. And 
you know, they just put whatever was in the in the pile and put it in there. Uh, we had a really big, big break about 15 years ago down by Evans Plunge, and that's what it was. It was just a rock, and of course that was the same thing with what we found last winter. So, given that risk factor, um, you know, we we made the decision a number of months ago to have this added to the project, but we have not yet received the final, you know, an actual price. So um, the plans are in the hands of the contractor at this point. Uh, they were encouraged to possibly submit that price in time, even for today, for me to prepare a change order, but I never heard anything from them. So our next available opportunity is September 6th, um, but it's in the, the balls in their court. So when they get that to us, um, you will be you know, having the change order to look at. And um, that is pretty much the news on um, the utilities at this point in time. Uh, for the next few weeks, you won't really see a whole lot of utility work. Uh, you will see a lot of storm sewer work, but uh, that is not, you know, that's uh, part of the state project. Um, as far as our utilities on North Chicago Street, there's just a, uh, a sewer line that goes across the street uh, from alley to alley. So that little section will be replaced. Uh, the water main in there is, is is solid, it's PVC, and the valves have been replaced both at the uh, university intersection and the Jennings intersection, that's already done. So for a little while, uh, there won't be a whole lot of utility work going on. So that's pretty much where we're at. Chris, you being the eternal optimist, do you want to mention the unbudgeted revenue source from the water district that we were talking about? Oh, <laughs> unbudget, unbudgeted revenue source. Well, yes, we, uh, we do appreciate one of our uh, bulk customers, which is Fall River Water Users District. Um, they have, um, thank, probably thankfully to all the cattle, uh, they've been uh, buying a lot of water during the hot weather. And if I am correct, Misty, is, was their July billing in excess of $40,000 in revenue? I think it was. Um, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So that you know that does help us out, and we'll probably see a similar type of uh, a purchase of water from them. Uh, and of course, everybody else is using a lot more water too. So uh, that does help us. It really does. Uh, anything else, uh, Council? Tracy, how many valves are we talking about on that for that seventy thousand uh, dollars? There are about sixteen. Uh, half of them are 12-inch valves, and they're the, they're the ones that are much more expensive. And then the others are 6-inch valves. So there's 70,000 each or total? No, totally. 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 no. Okay. not yet. Thank you. <laughs> Just <Yeah>. clarifying. <laughs> no, that, uh, right. I, that would uh, faint at that so one. So 16 of them for 70,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and some fittings, you know, there in some cases there will be fittings that are uh, deteriorated in the vicinity of the valves. But uh, at current prices, that's Are about where we're at. buried in the ground? How come we didn't see how deteriorated they oh, were? Oh, they're buried. Oh. Okay. There's no way you, yeah, you they were put in. Visually. Nope, you never see them until you open them up. You can exercise them and do all that, which, of course, is, is good maintenance. But the outside of the body, that's where we're seeing this deterioration. So unless you dug up the street, <laughs> which we're really not going to want to do. Uh, After this yeah. way. Uh, so we don't want to dig up the new street to fix a valve that literally ruptures. So that's why we're doing that. So to follow up to Deborah's $70,000 valve question, <laughs> um, last week when we were talking about the uh, projected cost of the valves, they weren't at the $70,000 figure. Is that what we're seeing? Is that week by week these things are... are, are there going? is, yeah. And I... I increased that number just a little bit because of potential fittings okay. that might be needing replacement. And yeah, I mean, when one valve, uh, we paid $3,800 for it uh, a month ago, and that same valve is now $4,300. That is, that is a very big change in a very short time. And we had talked about you going ahead and getting uh, as many valves on yep. order as you can to lock in the prices. Yes. Is there are other places to buy valves, or is it one place? Uh, there are other places, but 
the price is pretty much the same, and with this Northwest Pipe fittings, they are very, very good about having the things in stock. Uh, some of the other suppliers, you've got a six-month, nine-month wait. So that um, can be quite a negative factor. Plus, they have the brand that we specify. Anyone else? Thank you, Tracy. Okay, you're Thanks welcome. Thank you. Thank we'll Thanks, talk Tracy. next month. Thanks to you and all your crew for what they do for us. You're welcome. That takes us to personnel. Uh, can I get a motion to approve personnel actions A through E? Make a motion to approve personnel actions A through E. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Did you want me to mention there's a revised effective date on personnel item C. You approved his last day on the last agenda is the 30th and it was the 27th. So it's just a revised date. And I've got your abstention. Thank you. <laughs> All right. The motion passes. Takes us into new business. New business item A is discussion only countywide law enforcement. Uh, and this is our first opportunity to let the public know that um, we were asked by the county commissioners uh, if we would we be willing to have a conversation with them regarding countywide law enforcement. I had talked with the council and they were in agreement that they wanted to have that conversation. Um, Melanie, Deborah, Linda, JR, Bill uh, and myself attended the last county commissioner's meeting uh, and shared those thoughts with them that uh, we would have that discussion. Uh, we would begin looking at uh, what that might mean. Uh, I had said at the time that uh, I don't think this is a decision that council should make. This is a decision that the residents should make. They should give direction to the council uh, whether they want citywide or um, their own city police department, or whether they want to partner with the uh, sheriff's department to have countywide law enforcement. So that's the purpose of this discussion, is to let the public know. Um, let City Hall um, know your preference. Reach out to the council, let them know. Uh, I've asked Bill and JR to make this uh, a standing agenda item for their public works meeting, so the public can attend there. Public safety. Public safety, thank you. Um, we need to figure out what kind of contract we would put in place uh, with the county, what kind of services we're asking for, so they can come back with the cost, uh, so that we can put all that information in front of the council or in front of the public. Uh, my thought about doing that is would be to create a survey on the city's website once we have all the details, uh, outlining the services and the cost for uh, city police department, uh, services and cost for countywide law enforcement and then ask uh, the public uh, the residents of hot springs how they feel about uh, each one and let the council know which direction they want to go so we'll begin having those uh, discussions uh, we'll need to meet with the um, include the sheriff elect uh, in that conversation uh, we'll have a new one starting in uh, december I just want the public to know, let the council know how you feel. Let City Hall know. Um, if you have questions, uh, you know, ask those questions so we can in include them in a list of uh, what you want included in uh, your law enforcement. Oh. Council, do you have any comments? Were we considering a public hearing or just reach out individually and then compile? And yeah. You know, it, at this point, Mr. Edward, uh, ask them to you know let them let us know once we have all that information together and, and know what it's going to look like uh, a public forum at that point is, is probably a good thing to do to, to reach as many of them as we can but initially um, my ask would be to attend the public safety meetings reach out to your alderman uh, let city hall know how you feel about it would there be an option to have a vote like in november with the election um, I would defer to finance to tell us how soon that would need to happen. Typically, um, council would make a decision and it would be referred if we're adding something for a vote. So you'd have to make a decision first. You can't have them do it for you. Uh, 
I had a conversation with the new upcoming sheriff, and he had told me now that most calls are answered with the deputy follows the police department because he knows the police department so understaffed that they try to help out now. So it has been happening that the county has been helping the city on every call. Anyone else? Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit uh, in the committee reports, but we typically have our public safety meetings from uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, we will extend those meetings maybe till 5 or later uh, on an informal basis just so folks that maybe don't, if their time available time doesn't meet our normal meeting schedule uh, we will stick around so that they can come in and uh, if they have comments after for their after work time we'll stick around so that uh, they have an opportunity to visit with us and ask questions and give their feedback and uh, we are changing our next meeting instead of being september 1st it'll be thursday september 8th and so uh, that'll be our, our first opportunity to uh, to gather public public comments on that and we'll have that as our last agenda item so folks can uh, come and go as they is convenient for them anyone else all right thank you New business item B, a possible motion discussion to approve and authorize the mayor to sign a three-year memorandum of agreement. I'll make a motion to approve and, uh, and authorize the mayor to sign the three-year memorandum of agreement with Keypot Springs Beautiful related to the care and maintenance of the bump outs and the 6th Street Welcome Island. Second. Discussion? Yeah, on third page. Well, it could be, or say. Number five says we're going to install and maintain, maintain an irrigation system. Public Works never said that. We said that we have to put other irrigation systems in town that hasn't been put in yet. So we're not on board with this right away. It just makes sense to put one in as we're building it instead of ripping it all apart once you've got it together, though. Makes sense putting irrigation systems where we're going to do it for the last three years and haven't done it either, Deb. Well, we're working on getting that done. We're trying to get it done, but when you're building something new, you <coughs> save a lot of money doing it right up front instead of trying to do it after the fact. And the water department has has got this on track to to install as they tear that road up and run it across there. It's not a not a major cost. Not water a major department's deal. putting an irrigation system in. I'm sorry. Our water department's going to put the irrigation. We're running a system PVC pipe across the across the road. Yeah, streets on that side. They're going to put the irrigation system in the park. In the median, the the welcome median park yes across the street from from uh lens right in that intersection so why can't they put in uh, the depot that we've been trying to get for three years i don't know about three years ago craig i'm sorry i don't know but i'll I, find out i know but the money's in the budget to do it we're supposed to do it this year well then let's talk separately because i don't know about it so i'll find out and we'll get it done i have a few questions um can i go through them Yes. I think the next agreement number would be 10. So we'll just uh, add that if that's okay. Um, so then the following one would be 11. Uh, we say a designated nonprofit here and after referred to K as KHSB, but there's a few places where I think we still list it as nonprofit. So hopefully it's okay to just change that to KHSB. 
Um, on the first page on number four is the first place where that would be. And then I'm just not clear where the welcome median at 6th and 18.385, is that highway? It's actually 18 slash 385. It's supposed and so to be the, the And the highway 18.385? Yeah, it's the center. It is the center. I can change it to highway 18 slash 385. Okay. It's the no, center park no, median, which is what is the new one that came <laughs> They're taking line across the street from uh, Lens. Sure. So it is the small island on the second page on number 11 is the same place is the welcome median yes okay we have it called i think three different things and right. so i just want to make sure i was no, right as exactly to which right. one so we need to call it the welcome medium yeah median. um uh, number eight and responsibilities of each party keep hot springs beautiful will identify any requirements that are beyond the capabilities of the organization to plant the trees for the sixth street island same which is same welcome yep. and then it says if khsb needs help they will reach out to the city yes okay um there we so the mini island the small island, they're all the welcome it needs to be, median, I mean, yeah, right? I'll go back and change okay. all those to welcome median. And that doesn't really change the agreement any, so if they're all okay with that. Terminology. Um, there's, we have the representatives of each party. It'd be nice if it could say any changes to this agreement that the notice will be given and only agreed to by the signature of both parties. That's one of our standard contract terms. <laughs> so just a, a notice provision. So these are the representatives and then any change to this has to be agreed to in writing by both parties. Okay. I was wondering why um, we have a three year term but then it says it shall be reviewed at least annually to make necessary adjustments. Then should it have a one year term? Or should it just be three years and we want updates annually? Because if we're making adjustments oh, every year. The intent, the spirit of this was for them to provide an annual update on what they want to do, financials, whatever they want to do, an annual update, and then we, we reevaluate the MOA every three years. Every three years? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's no insurance provisions. Commercial, general liability, workers' comp. If none, if they don't have any of those, should we require that there be waivers? Um, there's no termination provisions either in the contract. I have to defer to Garland. Uh, we added in the uh, information that Garland recommended. Unless we missed something, Garland, is there something we should have put in here? Another question about insurance. <coughs> and I recommended that uh, insurance provisions should be included in the I'm going back. Yeah, that's right. I think I recommended an insurance provision. If they can't provide it, then maybe just we require waivers. So, because it will be on city property, they'll be doing work. And yeah. so. And that's why I wanted to make a really strong indemnity clause. Right, which is what we put in here. So, I think that's what happened. You clarified to them the, uh, the status of insurance, et cetera, et cetera. And then we added the indemnity clause in here. Is that enough, or do we need to go further than that? If I'm recalling, I remember I strongly recommended them getting insurance. Yeah, they, they do oh, have they insurance. Have they, they have insurance. So yeah. we should write the insurance provisions in the contract as all. Well. Okay, so and I then can add it to it. All contracts and agreements must be attested to by the finance officer of that statute. Okay. We'll add you to the list. <laughs> Those are my questions. Thank you. I don't think any of them changed the spirit of the agreement, <laughs> so if they're okay with those additions and changes, I think we're good. With everybody's concurrence, I'll make those changes and <clears throat> move on. So I, I do have one question under tools and equipment. Mm -hmm. Keep Hot Springs Beautiful may be provided city property if necessary, and we'll assume all liability for use. Question. Should it say equipment? Any clarification there? Yeah. I mean, it's put in there as we do with any other private organization where we, if we can, if they need help with something, we provide them a shovel or a rake or something. We're not talking about machinery and equipment. We're talking about... Um, or really property. We're talking about like equipment. We are talking specifically hand tools, that kind of thing, if they need help with something that they don't have. Should we, you want to clarify that a little more? I would think so because if you say equipment to me, I it think says the property. Backhoe. I think it says property. It says um, property. City, property. City property. See, to me, it says we're going to provide them property to, to use, I guess. 
it simply allows them to borrow a wheelbarrow if they need an extra you know thing to, to what they're doing because they're providing direct support to the city is the reason minor tools and minor equipment. tools and equipment minor tools yeah okay equipment. okay we can add that is the council comfortable with that yes yeah yes, yes. Shelly, do you have any comments? No? All right. Council, any other questions? I will agree to the sprinkler system if you put the depot sprinkler, depot sprinkler system on my next public works agenda. I don't handle bribes well, but I'll take care of that. No okay. problem. Bribe? I'm just saying that's the only way I'll vote for it. It's a bad word to use, bad choice of words. Um, yes, we don't have to do that. I'll, let me find out what the deal is. All right, correct. Don't we have a <clears throat> some money in the parks mm -hmm. budget still yep. for this year that we could utilize for that? I just need to understand what we're talking about. All I know mm -hmm. is water and depot, so I don't know what the details are. And correct, we can speak separately or at the committee meeting. But however you want to do. It. And before we move on, I, I want to get back to Craig's question and Jeff, your response. Craig's, as I understood, his direct question was, is it only water that is going to be uh, run to the, the welcome park or the welcome island? Welcome median. A welcome median. <laughs> or is it going to be water and the city crews will also install the irrigation system, the sprinkler system? We are installing the irrigation system out there. Okay. Does that answer your question, Craig? And for lack of for transparency, yeah. Tracy has also told me he would like to go ahead and run power out there, uh, even though we have no immediate needs. Um, if we decide not to use solar lights on the on the clock, we'll put in regular lights. So, How? so you know, is the clock electric or battery operated? Clock is battery operated now. It can be converted, but we didn't know early on what the status was. So converting it is easy. We just we have the clock back from the uh, company now. It's ready to install once we get to that point. I got a question, Mayor. When I first got on Parks and Rec on Council, it was my understanding that the depot was not part of Parks. <laughs> I don't have a direct uh -huh. answer for you on that, Larry. The parks take care of it. No. Okay, I'm just... <clears throat> I'll find out where the money is. Just bringing that question forward, so we're going to start throwing money around. We need to. No, we're we need not to throwing understand money, but I'll, I'll find happen. out what was budgeted for that project and where was it, it was budgeted. I have not seen it yet, to be honest. So. Money still set aside for the sprinkler system down there. So my request to you, Jeff, would be when it comes to installing irrigation <coughs> systems, we got uh, quotes to install the irrigation system at uh, Brookside. We got quotes to install an irrigation system at the depot. Um, I'd like to see you get a, a quote to install the irrigation system uh, at the welcome median uh, so council can decide whether they want to go that way or whether they want to have city crews install it. Uh, okay. We're now expanding city crews responsibilities into installation of irrigation systems. Okay. So, uh, if you do that, I would appreciate that. Take care of it. All right, any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. <coughs> New business item C, a possible motion and discussion to approve and authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with Jamie Johnston. Um, I make a motion and discussion to approve and authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with Jamie Johnson for code enforcement support to provide local support <coughs> to the contract with Joel Johnson. Agreement will... Um, agreement will not exceed the current budgeted authorization for the code enforcement professional services. Second. Discussion. What kind of qualifications does she have? No, there is no relation. And he's one of the problems here, and we, we discussed this in the committee, was that he's out of town. So this is a local person at a, less, a lesser price, if you will. Um, because as, you, as the council knows, we budgeted less than half of what we spent yes. this year for next year's service. So we're trying to transition into that. That's not, I ask what kind of qualifications does this person have to do this? I'm sorry, I thought you asked about relationship. I oh, did. You asked, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I don't have the information for you, Craig. Uh, I could have brought it to you at uh, committee, but I will send it, bring it to the next committee if you like. Will she be considered a site inspector? 
I mean, that's what we said for site inspection. I was kind of wondering what her title is. I don't know what a contract has to have a title. No, not necessarily, but when we're wondering what her qualifications are um, to do this type of work. How do you expect somebody to vote on this if we don't know if they're qualified? Essentially, here's, okay, so here's the deal. What you're doing is you're hiring a person to go out and take a list of that, that uh, our engineer, or excuse me, our uh, uh, development coordinator gives that person, here's 10 houses, I want you to go look at these houses, take pictures, make notes from the street, you're not going on the property, this does not require an inspector to do this. We're not gonna cancel our contract with uh, Joel that we set. Right now we've only spent, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, less than $2,000 for the year on him, but we need somebody locally that we can send out, and a lot of this has more to do with the nuisance um, uh, things, the, the tall grass, the you know, those kinds of of things that we don't really need a, a home inspector to go look at. Doesn't have to be Scott to go look at this. It can be somebody like myself who can go take a picture and make some notes and that kind of thing. So that's the purpose of this position. So where's this money coming from if we have that? Same budget. It's once the same budget. We're, we're using the, the residual money that we have in this fiscal year and then we're rolling into next year as well. We've only spent, as I said, less than $2,000 of the $9,000 that was budgeted for this for this fiscal year. We will not exceed the current budget, and we will not exceed the current budget for next year, the budget for next year, sorry. So if that one guy comes back, his is so much an hour or two out of the same budget? Yes, absolutely. It's the same, it's the same money that was budgeted for this year, the same money the budget for next year. How much are we paying that one employee we're hiring now? Who, this person? Yeah. This says it's in a contract, $5 per, per house. Inspection. Per house? Per house, per visit. And we control how many visits and where that person goes. So in order for her to be an independent contractor, she has to be customarily engaged in an independently established trade occupation profession or business. She has to continue to be free from control or direction over the performance of the service, um, both under this contract of service and in fact. So she meets those qualifications. Yep. Okay. So, are we paying for a vehicle and gas for her to drive around? No, she's using her own vehicle. For $5 is a... We will provide her a camera. I'm Good. sorry, girl? Hey, Jeff. I noticed I, it's probably a copy and text thing. You got the non-discrimination clause from the previous contract. It's not necessary. And no hold harmless, no requirement for insurance coverage or general commercial liability or workers comp. So I apologize to Garland. This is the one that I think caught you quick and with no time to really read through it. So I think that... I, I don't know if I saw those drafts or not. Well, you did, but I think I threw you under the bus on this one. Um, we can add in those clauses. If we can get if we get general consensus to agree with the contract, then I'll, I'll modify and put those that standard verbiage back in the contract. You said the indemnity clause and the insurance clause? Well, no, the, uh, well you added the non-discrimination clause, that wouldn't be required. Oh, I see what you're saying. I got you. I think it was a typo. All right. Cut the page. Yeah. Do we want to specify the ownership of reports, data, pictures, and et cetera, since she's an independent contractor and these will be city things? Would we like to add those kind of provisions where we maintain ownership of those reports? So all work product belongs to the city? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I have one more. So it says we're providing her all the necessary tools to perform the service. What are these necessary tools? Camera. It, <clears throat> the only thing it's a camera, to be very honest, a camera and, and a clipboard. What if she asked for a drone? <laughs> Just saying. Good question. Mm. Oh, no. Is she supposed to have a sales tax license? Yeah, she has her own sales tax license. Contractor's <laughs> excise tax. And do you need to add yourself? Misty to yes. the contract? Yes. Also. That's, that's, that's an oversight statute, on my part. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I think Garland's given us opinion on that before, too. Yep. And so this one would be 2022-11, since we added 10 to the last one. Yep. And I have notes, so can you help with the revisions? Okay, thanks. Yep. Any other questions? I do have a question on paragraph two. Contractor agrees to carry out visual inspections of homes in disrepair. Is this an exterior inspection only? Yes, this person will not even go on the property because okay. they're contractors. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Will the public be aware, I guess, then, uh, that they're coming and taking pictures? They're probably just, just going to No, I mean, it's from, it's from the street. It's, from it's the street, uh, just, yeah, I don't think there's any legal issues with that. <laughs> 
sorry, run it by me again. She, what is her qualification to do this? I, 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 I was listing but reading Driver's license and can use the camera yeah I'm, that's yeah. about it honestly that's about it i mean that's really that's really it we're not asking for an inspector here we're asking somebody who can go out and take pictures and do this and do the reports and, and, and track these these this information so who's going to follow up on all these reports <coughs> scott or scott uh, has to that's his job <laughs> i heard that <laughs> what's that I'm not going to repeat it. So she's an assistant to Scott. Oh, well, I don't think. But if we that's don't want to give her a title. She's not an employee. She's not an employee. No. She's not an assistant. She's being paid on per piece basis okay. to go out and do these inspections. She's a contract data gatherer. Right. Yes. Thank you. Very corporate. All right. Any other questions? Larry, you look like you're still reading. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm just. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. New business item D. Possible motion discussion to approve and authorize the mayor to sign a contract with Bradine Real Estate. Make a motion to approve and authorize the mayor to sign a contract with Braden Real Estate and Auctions, Inc. to perform an auction for surplus city equipment in October 2022. Second. Second. Discussion. Can we get a list of the, of the stuff that's going to be on this auction? We're working on it. We'll have a resolution for of surplus yeah, property not, before yeah. the auction date. This is in advance of the resolution so we can lock in the dates is what it is. Yeah. I'll try and have the resolution ready. Never mind. I won't say that. <laughs> Sorry. We're working on it. Back it up. Disregard. Anyone else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. No business. Item E, a possible motion of discussion to approve a plat of lots 1R through 4R. I make a motion to approve a plat of lots 1R through 4R of Evans Heights addition to the City of Hot Springs, Fall River County, South Dakota, formerly lots 1 through 4. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. New business item F, possible motion discussion to set a public hearing. I make a motion uh, for a discussion to set a public hearing at 7.20 p.m. on 9.622 on the applications from the Frog Projects LLC doing business as the space for an off-sale retail malt beverage in South Dakota uh, farm wine license and an on-off-sale retail wine license to be used at 108 North Chicago Street. Second. Discussion? Isn't this like that little mall? Yes, it's the right side. So this is another situation where we have two criteria that you can vote on. The suitability the of the individual. I agree. And, and the location. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I abstain. Funny that works. Did you get that one, Misty? I got it. Thank you. The motion passes. New business item G. Possible motion of discussion to approve an automatic budget supplement. I'll make a motion to discuss to approve an automatic budget supplement of one hundred four thousand nine hundred seventy nine dollars and thirty seven cents to water fund improvements other than building 602-43350-43300 and $34,993.13 to the wastewater fund improvement other than building 604-43250-43300. For the sewer and water mean replacement project. Grant reimbursement received from 
CDBG grant number 1919-107-02. Second. Discussion? Is this a grant for the up at school? No, this is the water and wastewater main replacement, and this is just reimbursement for the recent bill that you paid. So they, it's 50% of the project, and so I submitted the last batch of claims, and this is the reimbursement we've received from okay. the grant. Thank you. You're welcome. So the one you're talking about, Craig, that's uh, for up around the school? Yeah. We, we haven't officially submitted uh, for that grant. Oh, okay. I thought we had like two years ago. So. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, did we take a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Did you have a question? But I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Well, you're correct. Okay. So is that like on hold, or did we yeah. lose it and we have to reapply? We haven't lost it. Uh, we will need to consider whether we want to continue applying for that. Okay. Thank you. It may exceed our ability to pay it, our portion of it. Okay. All right, committee reports, administrative and finance. JR, Melanie. Our next meeting is at September 5th, 1 o'clock, Mueller Civic Center. Six. The 5th is a holiday. That's what I said. Whoop, Six. Whoop. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's what I heard. That. <laughs> I heard. Was that one? I heard the 5th. September 6th, 1 o'clock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> here at the Mueller Center. All are welcome. Thank you. Airport Advisory, Bill? Airport Advisory met Thursday, August 4th at 8.30 a.m. at the airport. President, members present were Don Connor, Mark Boxbaum, and Petra Wilson. Employees present were Rick Breitenbach and Tracy Bastion. Elected officials were myself and Mayor Nelson. Guests were Charlie Baker from KLJ Engineering and Ray Campbell from Southern Hills Aviation. Ray, uh, under communication from the public, Ray Campbell from Southern Hills Aviation, who is the commercial client in the city hangar, was present to introduce the company. Um, we were also informed uh, by Ray that the Hot Springs Airport was a very hot topic at the Oshkosh fly-in this year, so we're being talked about. Uh, under airport uh, update from the airport manager, uh, 11 a.m. that day was a scheduling meeting uh, for the tea hangers. Uh, site excavation should begin sometime around August 12th or possibly August today, August 15th. Um, the steel building is anticipated to be delivered sometime this week and they're starting weekly construction meetings. July fuel sales, we sold 3,156 gallons of aviation fuel. Um, the airport manager provided some additional positive comments that have been posted on ForeFlight. Um, transient stops for both hangars in July resulted in $1,255 in rental revenue. And July courtesy car rental revenue was $1,450. Wow. We had 175 flight operations in July, 25, or 21 balloon launches and two landings. And the Compass Rose has been repainted. Uh, under old business, update on the balloon festival. Again, we've got uh, 30 balloons registered. Uh, final planning meeting was uh, that afternoon. Uh, we've got two paragliders that we think will be participating in the festival. Um, Rick provided um, an update on uh, regional rates and pricing formulas for uh, hangar rental rates. Uh, the, we have a su suggested rates for 40 foot and less, greater than 40 foot and uh, greater than 50 foot wingspans. He also provided a list of comparison and suggested rates and those have been uh, sent on to uh, 
and Jeff and Admin Finance. We're also suggesting that uh, for the tea hangers, uh, $200 per month plus an additional $15 per month electrical surcharge. And also recommending a $200 non-refundable deposit to hold a tea hanger and address any issues once the tea hanger is vacated. Under new business, uh, we talked about an additional courtesy car, that uh, additional courtesy car being the <laughs> often sought after yellow pickup. Um, we talked about courtesy car rental fees. Uh, we'll leave as is. Um, Rick will be posting pictures and descriptions of the courtesy cars on the airport Facebook page so patrons understand what they're, uh, what, what they're getting. Under items from the members, uh, Mark suggested that we advertise our airport. The discussion focused around doing this on Facebook and other no-cost options. Uh, we will have a privately sponsored fly-in that's scheduled at the airport on September 8th through the 11th. And uh, haying is completed and the hay has been removed from the field and the successful bidder of that contract wants to take the hay for the next two years per the agreement. Uh, the meeting adjourned at 9.30 a.m. and our next meeting is Thursday, September 1st at 8.30. Any questions for Bill? Thank you. I, I, Bob, I was just getting ready to say something. On the hay, for the next two years, only, the only problem I have doing that is hay might go up. It doesn't have the price set in it. We set the yeah. price uh, at the time using USDA reports for market hay prices. And just guaranteed somebody to cut every Every time. We, okay. Yep. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Anyone else? Craig? Hey, my turn. <laughs> All right. Custer Fall River Regional Waste Management, Larry? Next meeting will be September 8th at 7 p.m. at the Mueller Center. Thank you. Yes. Historic Preservation, Deborah? They met August 3rd, 5 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. Present were Steve Wienia, Joe Muller, Mike Summer, Scott Sogi, and myself. Guests were Tracy Romy, and Sari Beckdom, and Lisa Cruz, Cruzy. Um, under old business, uh, a lot of this was um, a report from Sarah Beckham and her window project, which has kind of expanded into um, some restoration efforts along the way with them. Um, on 145 Chicago Street, which is the Petty Building across the street from Ace Hardware, uh, painting is complete on the front. Um, replacing panels where the glass was and getting them ready for paint as well. The owner is moving forward with finding his own muralist for the window that's on the left side that's been boarded up. 609 and 611 North River Street, which is to the right of uh, the Upper Crust Cafe, uh, the Bodega Building. The floor is filled and leveled with base course. The front is repainted and the upper level windows are next. The owner has been providing labor and paying for materials. Um, 243 North River Street, which is to the right of City Hall. The pink door will stay and will have a large pink ribbon to tie together to support breast cancer awareness, but it did get a fresh coat of pink. Um, Sarah is applying for a grant from the South Dakota Giving Circle to cover the cost of wood and paint and labor for a mural over the upper windows. So it'll be a mural that's cut into pieces to go over each window up above. And Mike has given her the name of a muralist. Uh, then we went into ordinance discussions because we've been working on that for two years now and we're at the end point. Um, there were some changes discussed that um, the changes were recommended by Liz 
Emily from the State Preservation Office in Pier, and you guys will be getting co copies of this shortly to re in your information packet before we approve them. Um, one of the main ones was uh, who enforces demolition by neglect, and the City of Hot Springs does, and we need to add determined by the City of Hot Springs Building Inspection Department after deterioration by neglect, and then there was a couple other um, little changes. But you'll see it all when it gets in your packet. Um, under new business discussion, possible motion <coughs> on sign application for Midwest Mental Health at 505 North River Street, um, which is in the old um, medical building block down by um, Morning Sunshine. Um, that was approved. And then Lisa Cruz stopped to update on the progress of utilizing the awning attached to her building, which is Many Moons Trading. Um, on Jennings Street, it is out of spec according to the updated heights that awnings and signs must be off the sidewalk according to the South Dakota SOT. Uh, however, since this is an original awning to the building, the DOT has given a waiver. The awning will be adjusted to move it up as high as it will go without removing it from the building. It's fine on one end, but as you move uphill, it gets closer. So that's been the issue there. And as I said, uh, Sarah Beckham gave the updates on the buildings mentioned in the old business. Um, meeting came to adjourn at 5.40, and the next one will be September 7th, 5 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. Everyone's welcome. Any questions for Deborah? Thank you. Evans Plunge Advisory, Linda. Okay, the Evans Plunge Advisory Committee met on August 11th, 2022 at the plunge at noon. <clears throat> Committee members present were Chris Hansen, Kathy Wren, Okoya Zimiga, Tom Nas, Allison Ritterbush, and Barry McNair. Absent were Dennis Fisher and Maris Smith. We uh, convened at noon. Um, a school update on the possible classes to be held at the Evans Plunge M Mineral Springs there was no update, Has there was nobody in attendance from the school to give us an update. Um, admission range, admission age range category update. The issue was approved at a previous council meeting with a start date of August 22nd of 22. Staffing issues, we have a full janitorial staff and with school starting on August 22nd, 22, we will be short staffed on lifeguards. Front desk, we are having dif reschedule or having scheduling difficulty. We will try to keep the outdoor pool open on weekends through Labor Day. Two of our slide dispatchers have expressed an interest in lifeguard training. We are still not getting in any applications. We are setting short short term goals with and will reevaluate re after Labor Day. In the last month, we have had seven saves. Four coming off the whale slide, one seizure in the water, one off the jet slide, and one in the kiddie pool area. And I thank the staff for conducting an inspection and addressing the alleged mold issue, finding none present. Kathy Wren thanked Tom for the advertising on the gra van graphics, and fall swim lessons are not going to happen. Perhaps a preschool or parent-child sessions later in the winter. Allison Ritterbush, the school swim team, will be gearing up in October. She completed the paperwork through the school so the swim team can let her as a sports activity. The next meeting will be September 8th, 2022 at noon at the plunge. And then we adjourned. Any questions for Linda? The, uh Swim team being able to, able to let her through the school. School. That's that's, yeah. that's exciting. That is yeah, exciting. yeah. So yeah, she she worked and got all the paperwork ready and completed for that. So so 
And I don't know how, how large of a swim team she has. Pretty big. It's big. Yeah. Is it? Big, yeah. Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. I should have asked her. Thank you. Parks, Recreation, Larry? The meeting started at 2 p.m. and attendance were Barb Walters, Joanne Howard, Bart C., Chris Gatke, Gerald Colligan, Linda Heath, Jason Migley, Lori Sherard, Sherard, Kathy Grant, Jeff Temple, the mayor, and myself. In public comments, Linda Heath talked about the Umerker Park, the need to start the fence after DOT moves. She also mentioned an ongoing raffle called BarkForYourPark.PetSafe.com. What this is, it gives the public the opportunity to vote for Umbaker Park. It's a nationwide thing. And if Hot Springs wins, it will be awarded $25,000 for the dog park. So everybody has an opportunity. It's called BarkForYourPark.PetSafe.com. Did you say pet safe? Yes. BarkForYourPark.PetSafe.com? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, thank you. Jason Migley and Joanne Howard spoke on the need to resurface the tennis courts so that pickleball can be better played on. Um, it was asked to the pickleball group will be put on the next agenda for discussion. Gerald Colligan brought a list of things he wanted the committee to address. I'd like to get with Gerald later on to go over that list again if he will meet with me. See him out in the audience there. On the rec update, four activities were left for summer programs, getting ready for the August programs. In the parks updates, <clears throat> understaffed trying to keep up with, with what's going on. Vandalism is an ongoing problem. Majority of staff is working with DOT. The rest are working hard to keep up the parks. In the new business, the outdoor volleyball court will be tabled till the August 7th meeting. In old business, electricians for handicap charger waiting on bids, some additional cost and estimates. And the barbecue grill Brookside has not ordered, not been ordered yet, waiting on donation from credit from the credit union. The meeting adjourned at 3:30 p.m. Next meeting will be August the 7th at 2 p.m. Questions for Larry? I have a comment on the bark for your park uh, deal. Um, you can vote every single day and you can use all of your emails. So if you have more than one type of email, you can vote on each of your emails every day. So please vote every day. <laughs> I voted today. I did too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So bark for your park. <laughs> $25,000 can really give us, um, they want to get like equipment for so you can teach your dogs to walk on planks and do you know do free obedience classes and you know we can go a long ways with that money anything else thank you you're welcome mayor planning and zoning deborah um last month uh there wasn't anything on the agenda so the meeting was canceled the next planned meeting is August 17th, Wednesday, at 7 p.m. at City Hall. Thank you. Public safety, Bill, JR. Public safety met on August 4th at 2 p.m. Um, at the Mueller Center. Present were Alderman Bill Lukens, Alderman J.R. Huddleston, Alderman Deborah Johnson, Emergency Manager Frank Maynard. Members of the public, Robert Miller and Heather Zortman. Uh, communications from the public are none. Update from the police department was none. Old business, 21-15 house number project. Reviewed missing address survey form and the process map. 21-23 fuels reduction grant. City administrator has information and is pursuing. 22-06 review recent recently proposed traffic control sign changes at Albany and South River Street. Uh, stop signs request at northbound alley, exit onto Albany, and at Albany and South River. Asked to consider the Albany and South River stop signs for the construction period. Consider the request as one third of Brookside residents have uh, physical disabilities and more kids are playing in the Brookside Park. <clears throat> I'm 
excuse me, Brookside Park and in the area. Issue is still being evaluated. Uh, 2207, request for recreation item at the water fill station site, no action. 22-10, uh, fire department access to Boardwalk Hill. Issue has been addressed with the Hot Springs Volunteer Fire Department. The item is closed. New business. Drive-through request by Wandering Bison. The applicable ordinances and proposed layout were reviewed. The requesters would like to know by the end of the month, request is being evaluated. A recent citation regarding cats was discussed and the meeting adjourned at 2.53 p.m. Our next meeting is September 8th, 2 p.m. Mueller Civic Center. You said All are welcome. September 8th? The 8th. Thank you. Not the 5th. <laughs> I'll plead the 5th. <laughs> Bill, did you want to add anything? Nope, you got it. Thank you, gentlemen. Public Works, Craig. Come on, on August 9th, there's myself, Aaron Nelson, Jeffrey, and Eric. I forgot his last name. Boyd. Yeah. I yeah. believe Rajni was there also. Oh, that's right. She did show up, didn't she? Streets and maintenance, and trimming trees in the fall. Same stuff, Valley View drainage, as soon as they can get to it, they're gonna start working on that. Utilities department, Jennings is open now. Wastewater treatment plant. There's two projects down there that's been let out. Same contractor doing them both, I understand. He hasn't been in town yet. So we haven't had a day to when he's going to start. Code enforcement, I have nothing on either one of those, so we must not discuss them. Boardwalk Hill, old business, it's open to fire and rescue only. No belts is supposed to be on that road, and there are signs at the top and the bottom. Uh, the icy spot and vision source, Albany. We talked about it, when the state gets close to it, we're gonna see if their road's going down to where the problem is that we need to fix. If not, the city's gonna have to try to help do it and get it done at the same time. Lease, lease agreement with Simon's material. Bob and, uh, and uh, head honcho up there keep playing phone tag. One of these days they'll hook up Summit Road Signs are in, they're going up. Are they up yet? We know. Jeffrey? Hello? I'm sorry. Summit Road signs? Summit um, Road signs. You're going to ask me if they're up? I do not know that. They okay. are in the same box with the RV signs. I've already sent uh, Billy a note. They will fire, be up this week. Fire hydrant pressure in El Edgewood Terrace. We're looking at it. I'm told that it's, <clears throat> there's really bad pressure there. So, <clears throat> like, Hardly any, so we might have to start doing something there. The light being moved from the top of the bypass down to the bottom, it's, it's been okay to do, the city okayed it. They're just waiting for the people to get her done. Clubhouse retaining wall, it's on the list one of these days. They kind of have it stable for now. They're going to try to get something done. Dollar General Road. Evidently, they can't vacate it, so they're going to have to fix it, and it's supposed to be done by October 1st, which is really soon. We'll see what happens. And the bump outs on Main Street, we talked about those in the meeting, at least one. I have nothing else on those until we uh, get closer to start doing them. Next means August 30th, Mueller Center at one o'clock. Hopefully Dave will be back by then. Any questions for Craig? You had mentioned Simon and Craig. Uh, Scott and I finally did get in touch today. Simon is interested in having the discussion uh, about purchasing that property. Um, Good. 
So um, I asked, um, Misty gave me the uh, name of the contact that we used when we were looking at the um, mining contract at the airport to take a look at that and help us understand you know, the mineral rights. So we'll get in touch with uh, that gentleman. Uh, Let's hope we have them because they've crushed some already. <laughs> Yeah. And um, sure we do get an actual the you know, dimension of what's out there so that we can begin trying to figure out what a fair cost might be for it. Sounds good. They did get back in touch. So. Thank you. Southern Hills Golf Course. Jeff? The golf course last advisory meeting was held on 8 August. Um, the uh, course, uh, obviously now we're heading into the bad part of summer, so we're starting to lose some of it, but it's looked really beautiful. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a lot of uh, comments from out of town guests, especially on the condition this year. Um, overall numbers, the rounds are up 6% over last year, and uh, as well as the cart uh, rentals are up 6%. Um, we have run out of carts several days, uh, especially on a Saturday and a Sunday in the last couple of weeks. Uh, council's already taken action to help me correct that. Right now, tea times uh, are, are filling up and, and the shortage of carts is the uh, main issue that we're having. A um, lot of uh, new golfers from out of the area, a lot of Rapid City coming down to play the course. Uh, the advisory committee is now reviewing uh, all their all fees and charges to recommend uh, any changes or structure uh, changes uh, to that. Uh, we'll get that together. And finally, the uh, lab, the point of sale system is up or operational. I couldn't be happier with it. Now, I know PJ is. I know Misty is. So it was a good move all the way around. Course management has really improved on that. Um, next meeting is 12 September at the golf course at eight, uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Sorry. Any questions for Jeff on the golf course? Thank you for all of your innovations. Mm -hmm. ah. Really appreciate You're all welcome. your efforts. I don't know much. <laughs> I know a few things. Like State Farm. <laughs> um, on my end for the uh, city administrator, um, we picked up one uh, veteran this morning off of the uh, work training program, the CWT program. He should have come on board this morning. Uh, that's always a good thing. Um, city crews have been requested and we are planning on doing so uh, unless there's some uh, consternation with this. Uh, we've been requested to assist the uh, dog park uh, nonprofit folks in digging the post holes over there for the fencing because there's a lot of gravel and rock in that dirt. We're looking at about four, maybe three or four man hours over there is all according to Billy. Um, I only mention it because, and we do provide limited support to nonprofits on these kinds of things when this is kind of the same example as we use with, uh, with um, um, Keep Hot Springs Beautiful. Um, we're not giving them equipment, we're just going out and drill some holes for them unless council has some issues with that, uh, we'll move ahead on it. Um, finally, Bill took away my, God, he took away all the good stuff, man. The T-Hanger project starts on Thursday. So apparently to hang at the airport, but thank you, Bill, for covering yes. that. And that's all I've got, and it's subject to your questions. We're also putting a water line in for that dog park yeah. for them also, correct? Yeah, and the only reason I bring it up, really, and normally I would, I would support it. I bring it up because I know when council approved this originally, I think the water was the only thing that you agreed to do. And so I want to be sure that you're aware that we're still going to offer them three or four hours of man hours out there to, to drill those holes. Is the street department going to have time? Well, we won't be able to do it. We can't do it now. So we, I've already told them that they, it'll be a fill in the blanks. You know, when we have a, when they have a, a few hours they can spare out there, it'll probably be in the late next month or early October before they get to it. So that's all I've got. Mayor, yeah. any other questions for Jeff? Thank you, Misty. Finance Officer Report. Thank you. I did provide the standard financials that you get monthly, which includes the year-to-date profit and loss. Uh, I'd point out we have the Business Improvement District, the 501 Capital Improvement Fund, the Water Fund, and the Wastewater Fund all have losses currently. Uh, expenditures are exceeding revenues. But if you notice, I did not say the plunge or the golf course in those, so <laughs> that's the good news. Um, as always, if you have any questions about these budget to actual fund summary reports, the year-to-date profit and loss summary reports, or the cash balance reports, um, please don't hesitate to let me know. 
the cash balance report just includes our Wells Fargo and our Bank of the West account, which you gave me the permission at the beginning of August to close out and combine with the Wells Fargo account. Uh, those numbers are accurate by fund, so please review them and again ask questions if you have them. Um, I want to point out the city has four CDs. The total right now, well, CDs and U.S. Treasury bonds is three hundred ninety-six thousand forty-one dollars and fifteen cents. Those are used for debt service reserve or restricted by statute. Um, they're not millions of dollars and they're not available to cash out and use. So uh, you'll just have one cash balance report going forward. It'll be the Wells Fargo account and that'll be the true balance in the fund. Hopefully that helps clarify any confusion about what's available in each fund. The notes I included, I want to thank each of you for your participation in the three 2023 budget meetings. I do appreciate the time and attention that's taken to discuss and understand the needs of our city. Definitely one of our most important functions is to be good stewards of the public dollar. The challenge then is using those dollars in a fiscally prudent and responsible manner, which both adheres to an overall strategic plan and is representative of our community's values. Estimating and then determining how best to use our limited resources is one of the most difficult tasks we face, but also one of the most important for our ongoing fiscal stability. I've completed all updates and have distributed finalized worksheets to the department heads and council. I'm currently working on the 2023 Appropriation Ordinance and Certificate of Municipal Tax Levy. The ordinance will have its first reading by the first meeting in September in accordance with state statute. As with all ordinances, it requires two readings, a vote to pass, publication, and then the passage of 20 days before it becomes effective. Once effective, I will file the levy with the county. The 2022 elected officials workshop resources and recordings have been distributed. I'd appreciate it if you would provide feedback on your opinions of the value of this recorded option. This was the first year that was offered. The city chose to pay for the recordings, hoping that all elected officials would be able to attend the workshops. I'm still working on getting through them all myself, um, but I've squeezed two of them in between the daily work of the finance office. I hope you too can find the time to view them, and I'm looking forward to your feedback. I've distributed the 2021 audit report and annual financial statements to all our lenders who require annual reporting, the MSRB, which is the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, as required by our bond agreement for the EPMS purchase. And although it's been sent to DLA as of the printing of this memo, it's still not uploaded to their website. So I'll continue to watch for completion. Um, municipal governance and accounting is challenging. It's different and it's varied. Most of you are familiar with these acronyms and resources by now, but just in case you aren't, I figure now is a good time to remind you. I provide you contact information on the Municipal League, SDML we call that often. Uh, we talk about the Blue Book, which is the handbook for municipal officials that they put out. It is full of guidance on all of the granted authorities you exercise in the management affairs of the city. If you don't have an updated version, which is 2022 of this book, please contact City Hall. And the League staff is definitely one of our best resources when we need training or have problems or questions. So I put both their phone number and their web address in there. Uh, the South Dakota Department of Legislative Audit, or DLA, they put out a green book, but you don't have one of those. You don't get hard copies of those books, but that is the Municipal Accounting Manual. That's where I get governmental accounting guidance on financial recording and reporting, subsidy records and control accounts, budgets, annual reporting, and audit requirements. Many other specific accounting policies are also available on their site, which I listed for you. Uh, Rod Fortin, the Director of Local Government uh, Assistance at DLA, is a great resource. You hear us throw his name around often. I've got his contact information and email in there. Uh, he's available to help answer questions from citizens, council members, or municipal staff at any time. Uh, South Dakota Codified Law, SDCL, they're the official statutes of South Dakota and they comprise a comprehensive research tool for anyone desiring instant access to statutes, court rules, and the state constitution. 
Although it's recommended that our city attorney be consulted on all legal matters, you took an oath to uphold these laws. So familiarity with at least how to access them is important. And I gave you the link to where those can be found. Municipalities are legal creations of the state's legislature. They're, it's provided for in the state constitution and we only have those powers granted by that constitution or the statutes created by the legislature. We're organized under the provisions of Title IX, but many other titles and chapters impact the daily business of the city. Dillon's rule, which was named for an Iowa Supreme Court judge, guides interpretations of the authority a municipality is granted, which is only those powers specifically delegated to them by state law or fairly imp implied from expressly granted powers. City ordinances, also included in your oath of office was the obligation to uphold those. They're permanent legislative acts and are necessary to carry into effect our vested statutory powers. They should be reviewed in their entirety for basic understanding and upheld at all times by all employees of the city and our governing body. American Legal Publishing publishes our codified city ordinances through a link on our website. The online ordinances are currently being updated to include revisions and additions done since September 2021. 20, they include uh, Ordinance 1235, which is a land usage update for cannabis dispensaries. 1236, which is business regulations, again, for cannabis establishments. Ordinance 1237, which is fire prevention and protection, the fireworks update. 1239 was our ward boundaries. We updated those. Until added to our code library, copies are available through the finance office, and I'm also working with our media coordinator to get a section on our website to display the ordinances pending codification, since we only send them to American Legal once per year. And then internal adopted city policies. The cities work diligently to establish these written policies where required and or recommended. Having them written and adopted by council allows for standardized practices and encourages fair and equitable treatment and decision making, all vital to protecting the city and its employees and citizens. Written city policies that may be of interest to you are our personnel policy, safety manual, investment policy, language access plan, accident investigation procedure, procurement policy, the state bid booklet, our donation and gift acceptance policy, and our grant policy. They're all in one binder, and each city location has one, and all elected officials and employees are expected to adhere to all adopted city policies. I made myself a note to add to this. I usually try to update yearly on these, the SDPAA, or the South Dakota Public Assurance Alliance. Um, they're an excellent resource for us. It's where our contract guidelines come in from, it's where our independent <coughs> contractor guidelines come from, uh, and they're an excellent resource and provide us all of our liability, our property, our building uh, insurance. And so next year I'm going to add to this list and include those links and some of the resources that are available on that page for you too. I uh, do a lot to keep our city running. Your committee reports show how vested you are. I appreciate what you do. My door's always open. Thank you for your questions and interests. Any questions for Misty? Thank you, Misty. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to defer lengthening the uh, council meeting. We have an executive session. Um, that may take a while. Uh, so if I can get a motion to go into executive session. Make a motion. We go into executive session in accordance with South Dakota codified law 1-25-2-1 personnel. Second. Second. Discussion? So that I don't forget, uh, for the public, there won't be any action taken after we come out of executive session. Uh, Garland, uh, we won't need you in executive session, so travel carefully going home. I uh, need you before you go, though. Everyone needs a lawyer. <laughs> and Misty and uh, Jeff, if you would join us. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more about why we're having an executive we session once we're in there. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, there'll be a five minute pause before okay. we actually get started.
Are we back live, Carl? All right, so we exited the executive session at 9.53? 9.53. All right, can I get a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Have a good evening, everyone.